Hi, I'm at the Roden Schwartz stand here at uh, Electronics 2015. I thought I'd just have a quick little impromptu uh, check out of this uh, Roden Schwartz HMO 1000 series. This is the HMO 1002. This is the 50 megahertz uh, model, one gig sample uh, per second, one meg, uh, mixed signal uh, scope. You can get an optional uh, digital pod which goes on here. It's got a pattern generator uh, built in and it's a nice little scope. The first thing that struck me with it is how compact it is. That has got to be narrower than a, uh, the Rigol uh, 1000 Z series. It's, it really is compact and it is ridiculously light. And the other thing about it, there is no fan. It, uh, it looks like it has a space for a fan in the metalwork, but uh, there is no fan in it. So it's ridiculously small, ridiculously light, and completely um, silent. Very impressive, and it's pretty sexy looking. Check out these gold-plated, uh, <laughs> gold-plated BNC connectors. Very nice touch. Very nice indeed. Um, not exactly sure how much this thing costs. I think it's like a thousand Australian dollars. It's not cheap. You know, you're going to be paying like probably double the like a Rigol, uh, you know, equivalent uh, type series, but. It is really a sweet little unit. Um, 12 divisions across, very nice. The menus, you just saw menus pop off there to bring the thing back, and it is quite responsive. I'm actually, uh, I don't know its waveform update rate, but uh, it is certainly, if I can, no, nope. <laughs> silly me. That's a, <laughs> I've done that twice now. The external trigger's here, channel one here's, channel two's here. It's a bit weird how they've got those. I would have expected the external trigger over here so I keep making that mistake oops and I like how it's got the auxiliary output on the front here I haven't looked at the auxiliary output uh, functions yet but I'll tell you what it is uh, it is very very nice it's very responsive and uh, it's got a few interesting quirks let me show you um, it's got this uh, uh, measure like I can turn on channel uh, two of course I can have both channels on as you'd expect like that and then select which channel I want but if I go you can see note that both channels are on at the moment but if I go into this quick view mode which is really quite nice because it automatically adds all these measurements look rise time 40 nanoseconds and it puts it right there uh, fall time less than 40 nanoseconds mean value the peak everything it works really quite well in quick view but you'll notice it's ch turned off channel 2 and of course you can actually have channel 2 on and then go into quick view well I believe you can yeah you can go in go into the quick view mode but you can only have one channel on at a time I guess I don't know whether or not that's a, um, a some sort of a limitation on the actual uh, processing inside this thing or whether or not they decided oh they don't want the clutter on the screen, so they're going to uh, remove uh, a, a channel. Anyway, I quite like this. Uh, <laughs> quite like this uh, mode. It's it just works really, really well. So that's that's the first thing I noticed, and uh, it is ridic ridiculously responsive um, to the position, even with all the quick view and measurement on. It's quite precise. The knob's a bit small. Uh, there's not enough purchase. It's not very deep, so I can't really get good purchase on that button. But uh, apart from apart from that, it really is quite nice. Zoom uh, operates um, as you'd expect. Oh, actually, that's another thing. The zoom function won't operate when the quick view mode is on. So you've got to turn off quick view mode, and oh, got to turn quick view mode off, and then you can do your normal uh, normal zoom. It works like any other scope, you know. So that's. But once again, very quick, very responsive, small and light crazy I'm, I'm really starting to like it what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hook up to a uh, my I've got a function gen here and I'm doing my standard uh, intensity display here here we go once it, unfortunately the buttons are not push uh, the volts per division is pushable so you can get the fine mode but unfortunately um, it's not uh, there's no vertical position push which is a shame they've gone to the effort to do that for the uh, hang on let's see if we can see if I can get this hang on oh what the other thing it was it does alias too so uh, you've got it uh, and once again there's no pushing on the horizontal there but hang on hang on 
Now here we go, there's a reason why I was having trouble getting my standard uh, test signal up here for the variable intensity display. Once again, it's not, uh, oh, let me put it back in the middle there. Sorry, I'm mixing that up with the... Once again, it, it tr has a bit of trouble triggering on this as most scopes uh, do. By the way, one uh, bad thing about this, it does seem to alias. Or it did before. It was. Now it's not. It's making a fool out of me. Ah, in automatic mode. Now I tell you what, this is interesting. You go into the acquire mode here, okay? You go into record mode down here, and you can actually select max update rate like this, and bingo, right? It's trying to um, get uh, the maximum waveforms per second. And I haven't uh, tested if we can get that out of the aux out yet, but if you go into max sample rate, or you can just choose the automatic mode, and you can see, yeah, it's automatic mode is not doing that great. See, it's, yeah, there we go. This is what I was seeing before. In automatic mode, it looked like it was aliasing. You can see that when I turn the horizontal back. But if I go into maximum sample rate, you see 125 meg samples uh, per second there. What, what was it doing before? See, 2.5 in automatic. But max sample rate and max waveform update rate, <laughs> it's gone bonkos and uh, 250k sample. But that's an interesting way to do it. I've never seen anyone go sort of max sample rate, max waveform update rate like that. So anyway, there's our variable uh, intensity display. It's kind of, sort of, doing it. Um, if we, here we go. So we can, it doesn't have a dedicated uh, intensity control, which I would like, but it's, you know, it's trying, it's doing a half reasonable job of that. You can see the, uh, see the peaks in there. Let me, uh, get in there like that and you can see the waveform oh, I keep thinking that's the trigger position oh, there we go there we go so that's not too that variable intensity display is not too shabby for a uh, low-end scope of course it's not you know it's no match for the Rigol but it's it's doing all right so don't have too many issues with that at all you just got to be careful in that acquire mode in the record mode you know it's you can probably leave it on automatic most of the time granted this is a complex waveform so but if you want the maximum uh, waveform update rate you can certainly do that but it still is um very very responsive and see if we can do a quick view on that see if it likes that it well it knows where the means in the middle um and it's, yeah volts yeah the uh positive and negative peak values there no problems whatsoever not sure if it's got a hardware uh, counter. It looks like it. It says counter there. Oh, no, my ground's gone. Anyway, I'm going to stop playing around with that. I had to hold the damn thing in. So, don't have a uh, BNC adapter. By the way, this probe is very, very sexy. But don't get excited. It does not come with the 50 megahertz one. This is a 500 megahertz one. It obviously comes off another uh, Roden Schwartz scope here at the stand. But, uh, yeah, it's very, very nice. So up until now I've had uh, automatic white balance turned on and it's really, I think it's been uh, <laughs> pretty crap so I've kind of, sort of, haven't really colour balanced but this is probably reasonably accurate. Anyway, um, yeah, it's got a whole bunch of uh, cursor stuff as well as, as well as that excellent quick view mode there and um, yeah, it's got glue to trace, uh, that's sort of like the sticky as it moves, uh, the trace moves across and uh, measurement type, all sorts. Oh yeah, that's it. No more than that, but yeah, that's good enough. Not for a, not bad for a low end scope, and uh, haven't even tried the FFT yet. So let's have. Oh, geez, that was quick. That was way into it. That was wow. I like that. I like that. Did it automatically? No. It's okay. It's turned the cursors on there. Gone into the FFT mode. Nice. Previous peak. Next peak. All right. Let's. Uh, next peak. There we go. Look at that. Nice, that's working well. Yeah, so I don't mind that at all. That is uh, doing the business for the FFT mode. Oh, announcement time. The next free seminar for coatings. So yeah, it's got no shortage of uh, measurement options. You've got um, auto measure uh, stuff here, and of course you can select your source and do all, all sorts of uh, weird and wonderful stuff. Let's check it out. Here we go. Trigger frequency. Ah, tri ah there you go. Hang on, we can uh, select, we can select our trigger frequency, there we go, 100 kilohertz, is that our, uh, 
Yeah. Is that is that our waveform update rate? No way. Can't be. It's too quick. And you can really see the difference in the uh, when you set max waveform rate. Of course, if you get a really thick trace, but when you do max uh, sample rate, there's so much detail in there. You get a very very fine. Uh, fine trace that's just very nice I'm uh, quite liking this puppy Shane there's no horizontal position I can't just whack that horizontal button there and put it back Arr, please come on make that clickable and this display option here is interesting in the display menu you can actually invert the brightness of the variable intensity display and it, it does have the uh, uh, intensity color uh, display as well for those uh, color fanboys but I'm not a personal uh, fan of that but virtual screen what is virtual screen huh. wow look at this turn on this virtual screen mode and you get this scroll bar in the vertical division there wow look at that that's incredible you can even finally adjust it. Wow, that's incredible. Can you uh, make use of like the high resolution mode, for example, and then get increased vertical resolution and then sort of like zoom into it vertically, that is. Wow, that's really something. But of course, don't get too excited because if you actually, uh, you know, you're limited by your ADC and uh, your vertical, uh, front end amp of course you can see how we've turned it up and it's obviously clipped here right so it's beyond the range of the ADC and we can keep increasing uh, you know our gain on there our vertical gain but it's obviously clipped so you know we can scroll our uh, virtual window like that but you know if the data's not there the data's not there because it was clipped on the front end of the ADC uh, amp the ADC buffer uh, drivers just clipped so yeah it's obviously not magic but uh, maybe if you got some high res uh, stuff there that's within the ADC range hmm. and here's a fascinating mode check out this in our um, interpolation here it's got like sine x on x which is your default which is your average one then we've got linear of course you can see it uh, go a bit uh, you know well a bit linear there just the uh, you know the old straight line um, and look, we're, but the interesting thing is we've got a sample and hold. It takes a sample, holds it, and then go takes another sample, holds it. Fantastic! I, you know, that might be useful for some people. Hmm. And I believe it comes standard with uh, serial decoding as well, and you can uh, do that serial decoding through the analog uh, channels, and you can set up different uh, uh, bus types here. So... We're into uh, the bus menu here, and we can set up bus one. Let's have a look at this puppy. There we go. What type is it? Parallel, oh, parallel clocked. And we've got SPI, I squared C, all the usual suspects. You are, can even, Lin. So fantastic. So we can go in there and uh, then configure all those. It looks very nice. And I believe that is, uh, that is standard. Nice. So there's our different, uh, uh, our different lines there sweet I think that could do the business and we've got a digital voltmeter as well and all sorts of stuff in this uh, utility menu oh look at this we've got ourselves a component tester old school component tester wow fantastic wow that brings back memories and we've got XY mode as well I'd love to get a uh, list of just figure on oh look combined and you can still keep the voltmeter up there jeez this is going to town and pattern generator as well we can generate a square wave counter arbitrary uh, so we can oh yeah look at that there's the there's the uh, there's the pattern generator terminals on the front that's a nice graphic jeez they've done well there and we can uh, we can set a counter upwards or downwards very basic but jeez that's pretty that's pretty sweet. And what else? We, and we've got our self a regular uh, function gen as well. What can we do? We can generate ramp, triangle, pulse, sinusoidal. So, you know, it's not a huge ARB thing, but uh, we can do the basics. 
geez, that's not too shabby at all for the pattern generator. Um, I'm pretty, I actually, I think that's built in. So that's pretty awesome. Oh, and I almost missed the uh, second screen here. We've got our pass fail mask testing as well. <laughs> I've still got my sample and hold mode on. Oh, this is, I like the way this is working. This is pretty sweet. Jeez, I wish I had more time to play with this, but I'm hungry. I need to go to lunch. If you don't get the canteen at this conference on time, then uh, yeah, there's nothing left, just the dregs. And there's the back. Uh, looks like it comes standard with uh, Ethernet but uh, and uh, USB. Uh, but uh, that's, you know, pretty much it. But hey, for a low-end scope, no problem. No external monitor, but yeah. The screen's pretty nice on it though. So anyway, that's all I've got time for today, I think. But geez, this is quite an unusual little beast. I love that it's small, ridiculously small, ridiculously light. No fan noise at all, because there is no fan. Uh, completely silent. Oh, I haven't even tried to uh, turn this thing off and on. What's the boot time like? Let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, that's pretty good. That's like six seconds or something. Jeez. That is a really, really nice little scope. A few little quirks in it, but it's got lots of, lot of interesting functionality. I uh, wish I could uh, have one of these to give it a full, uh, full going over, but anyway, that looks pretty sweet if you're in the market for a uh, really small, compact, uh, quality uh, scope, by the way, um, yes, it's uh, made by uh, Roden Swartz in their uh, Czech Republic uh, factory. So, yeah, should be pretty decent quality and uh, I think three year warranty or something. They'd no doubt stand by it, but that's, that's a sweet little scope. I like it. If you get a chance to play with one, recommend it. Catch you next time.